I want you to turn with me this morning in the Scriptures. We're turning to the second chapter of Luke's Gospel, please. And it's from Luke's Gospel, chapter 2, this morning, that the Lord wants to speak to us. Luke's Gospel, chapter 2, and come with me, please, to verse 41. Luke, chapter 2, and verse 41. Now his parents went to Jerusalem every year at the feast of the Passover. And when he was twelve years old, they went up to Jerusalem after the custom of the feast. And when they had fulfilled the days, as they returned, the child Jesus tarried behind in Jerusalem. And Joseph and his mother knew not of it. But they, supposing him to have been in the company, went a day's journey, and they sought him among their kinsfolk and acquaintance. And when they found him not, they returned back again to Jerusalem, seeking him. And it came to pass that after three days they found him in the temple, sitting in the midst of the doctors, both hearing them and asking them questions. And all that heard him were astonished at his understandings and answers. And when they saw him, they were amazed. And his mother said unto him, Son, why hast thou thus dealt with us? Behold, thy father and I have sought thee sorrowing. And he said unto them, How is it that ye sought me? Wist ye not that I must be about my father's business? And they understood not the saying which he spake unto them. And he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was subject unto them. But his mother kept all these sayings in her heart. And Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man. And we know that the Lord will add the blessing to the reading of his own precious truth. The title this morning that I have placed upon the message that God has given to me this morning, in fact, sketches the outline of what God wants to say to us here this morning. The title that I have placed upon the message certainly sums up what you and I have read together. And the title that I have given this message this morning is The Day When Christ Was Lost. The Day When Christ Was Lost. And child of God, obscure as that title may seem this morning, but it's the very thought It's the very thought this morning that God wants you and I to consider. The day when Christ was lost. Losing Christ. Losing Christ can be our experience. Losing Christ child of God, could be our experience. Did you know that? What I'm not saying this morning, child of God, is we're not saying that we can lose our salvation. Glory to God, we can't lose it. We cannot lose our salvation. Losing salvation, no Losing Christ, yes, we can lose Christ. We will never lose our relationship with Him. We will never, glory to God, we will never lose our relationship with Him, but we may lose our fellowship with Him. 
John chapter 10 and verse 28 signs and seals that fact this morning. The Lord Jesus says, I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of mine hand. Christ will never lose us, but we may lose Christ. That sounds like a contradiction, doesn't it? Well, it's not a contradiction. It's a very fact. The day when Christ was lost, the day when Christ was lost was the very experience of the couple known of, as Mary and Joseph. The day when Christ was lost happened to the last couple you could ever have imagined it to happen to. Imagine it happening to Mary and Joseph. Imagine that was the very couple that who lost Christ that day. What a precious treasure the Lord Jesus Christ was to this couple. What a precious treasure, child of God, that the Lord Jesus Christ was to Mary and Joseph. But listen to me, all children are precious. Psalm 127 verse 3 says, Children are an heritage of the, of the Lord, and the fruit of the womb is His reward. But to Mary and Joseph this morning, He wasn't just a precious child, He was the promised child. Promised from eternal years. Mary and Joseph not only had the precious child, but he was the promised child. He was God's Son. He was the Savior of the world. Yet, yet, even for Mary and Joseph, there was that day when they lost him. When they lost him. As I pause. And as I pondered, and as I considered over the passage that God the Holy Spirit brought me to in this week, just that, that is gone, I began to wait and to watch what the Lord would have me say. All of a sudden, three questions came upon my heart. Who were they that lost him? Where were they that lost them? And when was it they lost them? Who were they that lost them? Do you know, child of God, that it ever strike you there was a day when Christ was lost? Verse 20, sorry, verse 41 reads like this, Now his parents. No child of God, perhaps before we begin to complain about this couple this morning, I want to stand in their corner and I want to fight for them in their corner. Before we complain, or find fault this morning with Mary and Joseph, I certainly am not going to stand up here and criticize them. I want to play their part. I want to take their part in all of this this morning, because here was a young couple, a young couple, who God divinely, clearly, directly had chosen to be the channel through which the Lord Jesus Christ could come from heaven onto planet earth. In spite this morning of what happened here in Luke chapter 2 this morning, listen, God saw something in this young couple that God could trust this responsibility to them. 
Let me remind all of our hearts this morning, listen, Mary and Joseph didn't have their hand up and say, Lord, Lord, let us be the couple to bring your son into the world. Mary and Joseph didn't pray every night, Lord, may it be us that may be the channel through which your Son may come into this world. Listen, Mary and Joseph didn't put their hand up to be in this position. They didn't pray to be in this position. God chose them. God chose them. God saw something in this young couple this morning that chose them to be responsible, to be the channel, channel, the channel through which God's Son could pass from eternity into earth. They came from Nazareth, that despised forsaken place. Even Nathaniel said, can any good thing come out of Nazareth? Listen, when God was looking down, He wasn't looking down to mansions. He was looking down this morning to a poverty-stricken city. And in that poverty-stricken city, there was a poverty-stricken couple. It wasn't their finances that attracted God to this young couple. Do you remember when the Lord Jesus Christ was born? Do you remember eight days after He was born? They went to the temple and they went to offer the sacrifice. Do you know what their sacrifice was? Their sacrifice that day was two turtle doves and two young pigeons. The poor man's sacrifice. The poorest sacrifices of all. They couldn't afford the lamb. The two turtle doves and the two young pigeons was the poor man's sacrifice. That's all that they could afford. And God saw this young couple, not only where they were, but who they were. And God saw their faithfulness. And so God chose them. Tell me this, child of God, is there anything about you this morning? Is there anything about me this morning? Is there anything about any of us this morning that would draw God's attention to us? Are we, child of God, this morning, in that place? Are you and I this morning, child of God, in that position where God may use us? Could God have depended upon you, child of God? Could God have depended upon me this morning to fulfill this awesome, awesome ta task? They were the perfect couple in God's eyes. They mightn't just have been the perfect couple in your eyes. And they mightn't have been the perfect couple in my eyes. They mightn't have been dressed the way we wanted them to be dressed. They mightn't have been driving the same motor that you and me might have been driving. And all the rest of it. But they were the perfect couple. They were the perfect couple who were perfectly chosen and all was precisely confirmed even before he was born. Both Mary and both Joseph were confirmed as to what was taking place. Even though this morning, child of God, even though Mary and Joseph were the perfect couple, divinely, directly, definitely chosen by God himself to fulfill this purpose, yet always remember Mary and Joseph, they were still only people. They were only people. And even though Mary and Joseph made this blunder, I, and listen, we all make blunders. You know, the lovely thought is God never loved the many less. God never loved them any less. Who were they that lost him? The very couple God had divinely, directly had chosen. And child of God, if they could lose him, you and I could lose him. 
The second question that was implanted upon my heart when I thought about the passage was this, was where? Where were they when they lost him? You know something, child of God, this morning, Mary and Joseph, they were the last people that you would have considered. They were the last people who you thought would have lost Christ. But where they lost him, where they lost him, where they lost him was the last place you thought they would have lost him. The least of people to lose him, but then the least of places was where they lost him. It says in verse 41, Now his parents went to Jerusalem every year at the feast of the Passover. And child of God, listen this morning, they didn't lose him in Nazareth. They didn't lose him in the back garden. They didn't lose him in the home. They lost him at the place of worship. They lost him at Jerusalem. They lost him when? They lost him at the very feast of the Passover, the very feast that was pointing to him. The very feast that was pointing back that night so long ago in, 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 in uh, Egypt. When they were redeemed and the children of Israel were, were brought out by the blood of the Lamb, friend, the very feast that focused on Christ, the very feast that focused on Christ was the very time when they lost Him, the very place. Friend, they were in Jerusalem, and at the feast of the Passover, listen to this, at the feast of the Passover, up in Jerusalem at that time, you would have been tripping over lambs, people coming and bringing their lambs to offer them as the sacrifice concerning the feast of the Passovers. My goodness me, you were tripping over lambs, the very lambs themselves pointed to Him, the Lamb of God. And yet, it was in the midst of this feast when that was all pointing to him. And even the very lambs that were being uh, slaughtered and offered on the sacrifices, even the lambs themselves pointed them to Christ himself. It was there where everything pointed to him was the place where they lost him. It's often the case, child of God, listen to me. Mary and Joseph didn't lose Christ through any worldly exercise. Mary and Joseph didn't lose Christ this day through any sinful carnality. Mary and Joseph didn't lose Christ that day as a result of sinful apathy within the heart. No, 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 friends, no. Where they lost him was the very place that pointed them to him. You know, I could imagine them down in Nazareth, you know, downstairs, upstairs, whatever their home was, outside, inside, they kept that secured, watchful eye upon them, upon him. Why? Why would they have kept that watchful eye upon them? I'm sure Mary, every time she looked upon him, even though he was a child, she pondered many things in her heart. I'm sure every time Mary looked upon the wee one as he ran about the house that day, 
How often would the words return to her heart where she heard, He shall be great, and he shall be called the Son of the Highest, and the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David, and he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. Verse 35 we read, And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the Highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. How often, child of God, those words would have been churned over and over and over again within the heart and within the mind of Mary. Every time she looked upon him, Every time she watched him, every time she saw him, she turned within her mind and within her heart who this child really was. But now, this morning, they're at the place of worship. They're at the place where this morning, child of God, everything pointed to him. It was there. It was there. Listen to me. It was there where they lost him. They didn't lose them at home. They lost them in the very place that where everything pointed to him. Verse 41, it says, Now his parents went to Jerusalem every year. Mark those two words, every year. Do you know what can happen to our worship child of God? it can become a familiar ritual. Every year, it was the familiar ritual to return to Jerusalem. Be careful, child of God. Be careful that our worship doesn't become a familiar ritual. Now, here's where the rubber hits the road. When I'm talking about our worship becoming a familiar ritual, I'm not talking about the worship that happens in here in the tabernacle. I'm talking about our private worship. Our private worship. Is it a familiar ritual with you, child of God, or is it real? I've often heard men say, our church is boring, our church is dead, our church is lifeless. You look forward to getting out rather than looking forward to getting in. Do you know what happens in such a case like that? They blame the wrong people and they blame the wrong place. Why is that? The reason be it is this. If our private worship at home in the secret place is not right, it spills over into our public worship. Sometimes, child of God, we blame the church, we blame the pastor, we blame everybody else apart from ourselves because, realistically speaking, we don't have any private worship. Or if we have a private worship, maybe it's our own private worship that becomes dead, it becomes lifeless, it becomes stale. And do you see, child of God, of your worship and my worship in our private closet where nobody else knows about only God, if our private worship becomes stale and our private worship becomes nothing more than a familiar ritual, then it tells the tale in public worship. And be careful, child of God. You be careful and make sure your private times of worship don't become stale and lifeless. 
No, it was at the happy feast of Passover. <clears throat> Heed this warning. Heed this warning. It's the happiest moments that are the most dangerous moments. The happiest moments are the most dangerous moments. Christmas. Everything about Christmas, like the feast of the Passover, points to Christ, doesn't it? For those of us this morning who know the Lord Jesus personally, listen, Christmas, everything to do with it, it points to Christ. The feast of the Passover was a happy time with family, relatives as they returned to Jerusalem every year. Listen, Christmas time is the very season that points us to Christ. We gather, yes, with family and friends, but it's then when we can lose Christ. Sometimes we can get distracted with the family and we get distracted with the food and we can get distracted with the fun and get distracted with the fellowship one with the other and yet lose Christ in it all. Jerusalem, it mattered not concerning the sacred ground upon which they stood on. It mattered not concerning the sacred ground upon which they stood on because the sacred place and the sacred purpose did not prevent them from losing Christ. And listen, child of God, these very things can actually be a distraction to us. Oh, I... Do you know, friends, this morning, the tabernacle here and the work that goes on here can be a very, the very distraction. The pastor himself could be a, the distraction. The very people could be the distraction. Anything is a distraction this morning, child of God, if it takes our mind away from Christ. It's a dangerous thing. to get taken up with other things, sacred as they are. It is dangerous to get taken up with things, spiritual things they may be, and get distracted from Christ. Who were they that lost them? Where were they that lost him? But last but not least, when was it they lost him? Verse 44, but they supposing him to be, have been in the company. I remember being at a theme park in Florida one time and you talking about a crowd there, it was unreal. And I saw a mother frantic. She stood at an ice cream van or one of these vans and the wee child had broke free. And pandemonium set in because the wee one broke away. A moment's distraction and the wee one was away. Thankfully, they found him. In most cases, that's how a child is lost. A child breaks away from its parents when their parents are being distracted. It's not so with the case here, child of God. It's not so here. For Mary and Joseph, and for this incident, it wasn't the child that broke away from the parents. It was the parents that broke away from the child. And they went a day's journey. 
Have you seen Jesus? No, he's not was. Have you seen him, Mary? I haven't seen him, Joseph. Go down to the far corner there and ask the folk, today, have you seen him? No, he hasn't been with us. Is he with you over here? No, he's not with us. Has anybody seen him? Oh, Mary! Oh, Joseph! We've lost him! We've lost him! The Christ of God! We've lost him! The promised Messiah! We've lost him! We've lost him! Does anybody know when the last saw him? When we man puts up his hand and says, the last time I saw him was when we're leaving Jerusalem. Get back. Get back to Jerusalem. And we'll seek him there. Oh, as I bring this message to a close now, you lost him. You don't enjoy that unique, blessed, close, near fellowship that you once enjoyed. You could say this morning like old Cowper of old, where is the blessedness I knew when first I saw the Lord? Where is that soul-refreshing view of Jesus and His Word? I don't have it anymore. Is that you? Have you lost them? And you take a wee, you take a wee moment now, and you just need to do what Mary and Joseph need to do, need to have done. You need to go back to where you lost them. Is it an unforgiven sin or a spirit or some wrong attitude you possess this morning? Maybe that's the point where you lost them. You get back this morning and find them. Because you will find them if you search for him with all your heart. It says, it says there at the end of verse 48, Thy father and I have sought thee sorrowing. Ah, oh, boys, I can tell you they were three long days and they were three long nights for Mary and Joseph. I'll tell you they were sleepless nights. But thank God the one that was lost, the Christ of God that was lost, wasn't lost through any fault of his own. It was through the fault of those that were responsible for him. Coming this Christmas time, child of God, take this to heart. Love Christ this Christmas. Whatever you do, love him. Don't lose him.